All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unit 3, and today we're going to talk about non-fiction text features. Now, first and foremost, if you were absent and were not here when we did our non-fiction magazine day with the scopes and action magazines, you need to go ahead and stop. Stop right here. Get yourself one of the magazines and read it from cover to cover. Now, we had a choice for you. Uh, you got to choose from about 9 to 10 magazines. Um, so if you happen to miss that day, I'm going to let you look at the magazines, choose one, and you're going to read it cover to cover. And then you can come back here to nonfiction text features. So today you're going to need two things in front of you. You're going to need your magazine, which you ha should have in your folder. And you're going to need, of course, your reader's notebook. So, let's start. Left-hand side of your notebook, write nonfiction text features and today's date. Now, when we talk about nonfiction, you know we mean something that is real, that it did happen. Again, not that it could happen, but that it actually did happen. So... When you have your uh, magazine, you will be looking for non-fiction text. So, what do you notice here when we look at this magazine? Well, first of all, let's look at a regular piece of fiction. This is the stuff you read on the daily. This is the things that we've been doing all last unit. And you'll notice, what does it look like? It looks like words on a page. It tells some sort of story, paragraph to paragraph. Uh, it doesn't really pop out to you. Now look at this. This is a non-fiction text. What do you notice when you look at it? you got this big title. you got pictures here with some information. Information and pictures, information and pictures, more stuff over here. You have big bold letters over here, giant stuff here. You notice that this is exactly what I mean by text features. Look at all the different things you get in this nonfiction text. So, do you see what I'm talking about here? When I talk about nonfiction, the difference in the two? Well, what if we took away all the words? You still could probably figure out what's going on with this if I took away all the main words in the magazine article. All right? Look at that. You think you could still figure out what this is about even without the text? Because that's what text features help you do. So, let's look at some text features. And we're going to start this out by looking at the video, of course, of my fave, my buddy, my pal, Flocabulary. Leo here just found out he has to do a report on sloths. He checks out a nonfiction book. The title is All About Sloths. Hmm, this is a little bit different from the fiction books that he's been reading. It's got all these text features. Those are the things that draw his eye to important information and help him understand all the interesting facts. Leo's gonna use those text features to find his way around the text. Yo, Leo opens the book. It looks like nonsense till he looks in the front for the table of contents. It's nothing like the table in his kitchen. Uh, it lists big topics with a short description. Leo sees chapter two is called Sloth Habitat. He starts on page 15. He flips to that at the top of the page. Just as expected, it says Sloth Habitat in very big letters. That's called a heading. It helps him figure out what this section of the book is all about. There are subheadings too. The chapter's divided by smaller headings. Like trees and climate Leo sees a picture that makes him laugh A sloth hanging from a branch That's a photograph It was taken with a camera Put in the book To show us how a sloth really looks Underneath the photo There's a quick description 
description That's a caption It tells you what's in the picture Leo starts to wonder What's a sloth diet? There's a text feature That'll help him find it It's called the index All topics of importance Are listed in the back In ABC order Leo spots diet That was easy to find It's on pages Seven through nine Feeling lost in a book that's non-fiction Text features will point you in the right direction The captain has a compass, the pilot has a map You can use text features to find facts Feeling lost in a book that's non-fiction Text features will point you in the right direction The captain has a compass, the pilot has a map You can use text features to find uh, facts Leo keeps reading, it's making him think He sees that some species of sloths are extinct Extinct is bold, what's up with that word? It's bold because it's something new to learn It could be italicized or underlined Want to know what it means? It's easy to find In the back of the book there's something called a glossary Where new words are defined properly It's an ABC order Leo looks through the list He sees extinct means it no longer exists Now he's flipping through the pages Hang on man He spots a cool image called a diagram That's a picture that shows different parts of something So Leo knows how it works how it functions. There are labels that point out different parts like stomach, lungs, and its loving heart. This table compares sloths to giraffes. We can also compare with a chart or a graph. These are visual ways of organizing data. So long, sloth. We'll see you later. Peace out. Uh, I said we'll see you later. Uh, I forgot how slow these guys are. Feeling lost in a book that's non-fiction Text features will point you in the right direction The captain has a compass, the pilot has a map You can use text features to find facts Feeling lost in a book that's non-fiction Text features will point you in the right direction The captain has a compass, the pilot has a map You can use text features to find facts Oh, thank you, Flocabulary you are entertaining and educational. So, text features. Let's get that definition down. Text features are all the extras other than just the text. Now we put extras in quotation mark because it is extra. Now, let's practice today. We are going to look at a Science World magazine from 2007. Uh, the older I get with these videos, the more this becomes when you were born. But right now, you weren't. Thank goodness. So, if you absolutely have to have a hard copy of this to look at when you're doing the video, um, I may or may not still have copies, depending on how age has treated these, but hopefully you can follow along with the video. So, what is the first thing that jumps out at you? You're looking at this as a whole, okay? You kind of see different things. What is the largest thing that tends to just jump out at you? Well, how about the word Hot Wheels? Why do you think they use the word Hot Wheels? Well, for one, it should kind of take you back to a time where there was a toy you played with, right? The little cars called Hot Wheels. And then why would they use this Hot and Wheels? What are they talking about here? Let's look for it. Well, they're talking about Australia. Okay, and Australia is hot. And wheels, why wheels? Okay, looking around, just a quick little scan. I see things that are on wheels. So, hot wheels. What do we call this? What do we call this here at it? The very top of it. In this magazine, we call this the, that's right, title. Title. And what is the title? Okay, this is the definitions you should be copying down, by the way. A title is the statement that introduces the whole text, usually the biggest text on the page. It is usually catchy and tries to get your attention. And that's exactly what it did, did it not? So, under text features, first thing you're going to write is title. Go ahead and get that definition. Yep, 
did you need to pause it? And pause it. Because here we go. What's the next thing we're going to look at? Hmm. What's the next thing that kind of stands out to me? <gasps> what is that underneath that? It says Hot Wheels is the title. Then what is this called? Follow a fleet of solar cars as they zoom past kangaroos in Australia's wild outback. Right? What is this called when we're talking about text features? That is correct. It is the subtitle underneath the title, and it explains a little more of what the whole text is about. So you get this catchy title, and then you get a subtitle under it. And the subtitle just gives you a little bit more explanation. So, pause, and put the definition for subtitle. Go ahead, I'll wait. Okay, you're going to have to pause it if you're not ready. Here we go. Now, we're looking at our magazine article again. We've talked about the title. We have talked about the subtitle. Sub meaning under. Get it? Subtitle. Uh, you ever watch a movie? If you see something in a different language you don't understand, what's it called? Subtitles. That's right. But this subtitle actually means what exactly what it says. It is under the title. So, now we're looking at our magazine once more. What is the next thing that we're going to talk about? What's standing out to us? What is that? Right there. Sun catches. What do we call those? You see that a lot um, in social studies texts. That I tend to see, we see something like that, and then it explains it afterwards. What does that mean, this sun catchers? Hmm? S sun catchers. Well, if we move that down a little bit, we realize that it is kind of summarizing and giving us an idea of what we're going to read about. Right? What do we call these? Dun, dun, dun. It is a heading. That is correct. A heading. A heading is a title for one section of the text. It tells what that part only is about, right? So if we're talking about sun catchers, we're talking about solar stuff, it's going to talk probably more about the solar panels there. So next definition is heading. This Remember, text features. What are the features of a text? And this is the heading, the head, right? Think about it that way. If you're going to explain someone's body, you start by usually explaining their head, their face, right? So if in a nonfiction text, the text features when you have a heading, it is going to explain that part only. Get the definition. And I'll wait. You ready? If not, pause. Because here we go. So, now, let's look at our next bit of text features. What do we have? Woo! What is that? What is that called right there? Besides being really close, emphasized words, words that stick out because they look different. Either they're going to be bold, italic, underlined, colored, Bullets, numbers, lists, etc. These are called emphasized words to emphasize. See what I'm doing with my voice here? Emphasize. It sticks out when I say emphasize words. Definition. Write it. Okay, what else are we dealing with here? What are these here to the side? Well, Obviously, you have a picture, and it is important as you're reading any type of nonfiction, especially magazine articles, uh, but it can be textbooks and stuff, that you're not just looking at the pictures. What else are you doing? What else are you doing besides just looking at these pictures? Hmm. Let's look at one a little closer. 
you are reading the words to the side. Wow, you got it. That is correct. So, if you're looking at this, this guy's obviously in a solar paneled car. And it says, let me out. Melbourne, Australia's Aurora 101 completes day one of the 2005 WSC. The driver gets ready to climb out for some deserved rest. So I guess with the top coming up there, he's getting ready to get out. So what are we seeing other than the picture? We're seeing the side stuff, right? Here's another one. We separate them, and you realize that you have to make sure that you're reading this, not just looking at the picture and moving on. This on the right, right here, helps inform the article itself. So text features, again, are so important to what you're reading. What do we call those? Well, obviously a picture, right? First off, it's a photograph, a drawing or image that somehow relates to the text. But that thing on the side is called a caption, writing around the picture or graphic that explains the picture and gives more details. This is where I tend to see readers really skip are the captions. You know, most of the time, it's not just there to uh, give credit to someone for taking the photograph. It is there to help inform the article. It's called a text feature, and it is very important that when you are reading these things that you do not skip. So, now we have picture and caption to add to our definition. Pause here. And get your definitions. Back to our text. What else are we looking at, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, Q Roy, we have a picture of Australia. All right? So, what does this do? It's showing the race course from start to finish, starting at Darwin, going all the way down. And then, of course, you're seeing this graphic. You're seeing the caption, and it's also showing you on the globe where Australia is at. What else do we have going on in here? Let's look. Well, if you pull this out, this actually kind of tells you how it works. That's why they call it nuts and bolts, how it gets its power, and it informs you on many levels on what's going on, what makes these things work. And again, you should be paying attention to all of this when you read an article, no matter what it is. You're going to see many of these same text features. All right? This is called a map. That is called a diagram. Why do we call it a map? Well, it's geography. You got Australia, and then you've got how the solar vehicle works. All right? map diagram are we skipping the words on this we're just looking at pictures no we are reading everything so boom then we have graphic an extra feature that gives visual information could be a map chart diagram table graph timeline think about these things that you've made uh when we did the world war ii uh, world war one project right I wanted you to get graphics in your poster because this is your visual information. Remember how you took the data of the uh, killed in action soldiers and you turned that into a chart or you turned it into a table or you turned it into a graph, right? So a graphic, an extra feature that gives visual information. Make sure you're putting what's in parentheses too. Get this definition, please. All right, if you don't have it, pause. What else can we look at here when we're looking at it? Because, again, if you look around, you're starting to see things that you should already recognize. You've got headings. You've got diagrams. You've got pictures, captions. So what else do we have? Well, what is this pulled out here to the side? We have some extra things. You have a web extra. You can go to the Panasonic World Solar Challenge and visit it at a website. 
You've got facts and figures about our friends down under in Australia. Aussie speak. I see, I'm trying to do that down. See that? Aussie speak. Choke means a chicken. Short for afternoon, loon. Denny is slang for the word toilet. I'm trying. It gets British sometimes on me. But you're getting kind of colorful information here about Australia. And then you can learn more about it. What do we call these? These are sidebars. A small related piece of writing off to the side of a text. It gives information that is interesting, but it is not crucial to the text. Text. List of facts, a biography, where to find more information, maybe a personal story about one of the people. Okay, these are called a sidebar. It's interesting, but not crucial. That's when you'll hear Mr. Gibbs sometimes tell you to stop the sidebar conversations. I'm sure they're interesting, but they're not crucial. So you can kind of remember it that way. Now, you're going to have a handout called Finding Text Features. How am I going to work this out, Mr. Gibbs? Well, it's going to look like this. You can have a title, subtitle, heading, picture, caption, emphasize words, graphic or sidebar. On one side, you're going to have the example. Either copy it or the first few words if it's too long and explain or explain in your own words. Now, how did it help you understand the text or why you think the author chose to include it? I want you to be specific. Now, you were like, oh, what, Mr. Gibbs? I'm still a little confused. Well, let me give you some help. Let's go back to the idea of the hot bills, right? Look for the title. So, all right, so. You're seeing my example here. We put Hot Wheels, why it caught our attention. What about the subtitle? Well, again, let's go back and look. Follows a fleet of solar cars, right? You know right here is your subtitle. So under subtitle, you write down what the subtitle was. Again, if it's a longer subtitle, don't write it the whole thing. But I expect you to write at least some of it. And then... What did this do for me? Well, it tells me what the article will actually be about. Solar cars race in Australia help, also helps the title make sense. Hot Australia wheels solar car. So we know what that does. What else do we have here? Well, going through what we just talked about, we had the heading, sun catchers, space cruisers, flash the future. Um, then explain what those headings meant, the pictures. What did that help tell us? What did the captions help tell us? What about emphasized words? What did they do for us? And graphics or sidebar. So I want you to look and study over my example here for a minute. All right, I want you to pause here. Take yourself a few minutes to look over because what I'm expecting you to do is to be able to dissect and take the text features of your own main article remember when you picked out your magazine we told you there would be that feature article i want you to take that feature article one that's more than just a one pager and i want you to go through it and do the same thing i'm showing you here so pause right here look over this for a minute now you put it in your notebook do not glue it down or tape it down until after you have filled it out you're going to put on the right hand side of your reader's notebook text features practice and then you're going to put article and then the name of your article when you have finished filling it out that's when we put it down and secure it okay and this handout will be in the back of the room where they're always at okay Text features, the name of your article, and on your own, you're going to find your main article. Remember, we called it the, the feature article or the one that it's really all about. 
Remember, it should not be a one pager. You're going to find each text feature we've talked about in this video and list them on your worksheet. Then fill in the information about how it helps you understand the text. Be sure to look at the hints to help you know what to write. You should be able to find all these text features in your main article. If you can't find one, you may use another article in your magazine. Just be sure to note the title out to the side. More than likely, you're going to be able to find all these text features. Okay? So, have fun. May the odds be ever in your favor. Do not forget to fill it out completely.